Grant, thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be here. I joined Rotary in 1983, and I just have to tell you, I love Rotary. My job has allowed me to make up lots of clubs. I'm always so humbled uh, by every Rotary club I go to. I'm humbled every time the Rotarian magazine comes to the house and I see the good work that's done all over the world. So it's great to be here. Thank you very much. When Grant uh, extended the invitation to come, uh, I think it was because he knew about this new position, which I took just a year ago as the state director for an organization called FIRST. And most people have probably not heard of it. I hadn't uh, until a couple of months before I took the job. And uh, so as I thought about coming and talking about FIRST, I thought I could come and talk for 20 minutes. Um, on the other hand, I could come and talk for about a minute, uh, show a short video, um, introduce some of the teacher, parent, mentors uh, who are working with kids right here in this community, and they might bring some students with them who are actually in the program, and they might speak to you. And I really thought that would be a whole lot more effective, and then maybe we can have some time for Q&A at the end. So I'll just do the briefest of scene sets and then show a real short video that Morgan Freeman uh, did for us earlier in the year. So FIRST is a 20-year-old organization. It's headquartered in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's 10 years in the state of Washington. And its goal is to inspire and recognize students for academic achievement, particularly in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math. Math is a sure loser. Okay. Um, science, technology, engineering, and math, which often is referred to as STEM. Some of you are familiar with that STEM word. Uh, so the way that the founder, Dean Kamen, who invented the Segway and also the first insulin pump, decided to do it was to challenge kids to build robots. And by building robots and pr providing an opportunity for them to compete in a kind of a sports, uh, rock concert, mascot, fun, exciting way, he felt like he could bring kids to the conclusion that there is something to this math and science, that you actually, there's a practical application for it. And he was disappointed that the society was overly celebrating sports and uh, pop culture. And I spent my life in sports, I love sports, but I think it's possible that we are somehow out of balance in that regard. So uh, I think Dean came and had it right. So we have programs for kids at the grade school level up through high school, and the students we brought today are from Montlake Terrace and from Linwood High School. Hello, and um, so they'll be able to tell you about the program that they're involved in. So the recap is how do we stay competitive in America? How do we get kids interested in science and technology? One of the ways to, just one of the ways to do it is to, through the program called FIRST, for the inspiration recognition of science and technology. So I'd like to show a short video and then I'll introduce one of the parents who will introduce the kids and we'll try and leave enough room for Q&A at the end. But I think you'll be inspired by each one of their stories. So, And I'm going to hand the microphone to Andrew here, which is how we're going to do the technology for this video. Sports and entertainment, 
let's inspire these kids to do big thinkers the same way Shaquille O'Neal and inspire them to spend dozens of hours a week bouncing a ball. Our president agrees. Scientists and engineers ought to stand side by side with athletes and entertainers as role models. And here at the White House, we're going to lead by example. We're going to show young people how cool science can be. 250,000 kids aged 6 to 18 compete at all different levels. In two first regular leagues, the first tech challenge. And at the high school level, the first robotics competition. The only difference between this sport and all the others is every kid on our teams can turn pro. There's a job out there for every one of these kids. Students who take part in first are 50% more likely to go to college and twice as likely to major in science or engineering. I definitely know that I want to pursue engineering. Once they've tasted what the power of knowledge is, that it can be fun and rewarding, they will go back. There's no doubt, first works. 10 or 15 or 20 years from today, some kid in those stands will have cured Alzheimer's or AIDS or cancer or built an engine that doesn't pollute. Look at these kids. They're, they're the future. I feel like I can go and do anything I want to do because of this program. Someone took the time to guide and inspire me. It changed my life. Take some time. Go to usfirst.org. Perfect, Andrew, thank you very much. So I'm going to introduce to you Lindy Baker from um, Mount Lake Terrace High School. She's brought two students with her. She uh, will then in turn pass it to Heidi from Linwood. Uh, a couple of two students will speak, and then we will have Craig Devine speak, who's uh, a teacher at Mount Lake Terrace, and uh, hopefully we'll still have time for some Q&A. So Lindy, come up and introduce your two students. Let's welcome Lindy Baker. I'm going to give you just a tiny bit of information and try to keep it short. Um, when we were here, however many years ago that was, three or four possibly, um, that would have been the time that we were working together with Linwood. We, Mount Lake Terrace is a seven year team. This year starts our seventh full year as a team. And four, four full years ago, because Linwood is starting their fifth year this year, we helped start them. We worked together our first two years. And um, this is one of the things FIRST does. It's called Gracious Professionalism. We compete out on the field fiercely, but we'll do anything to help another team succeed. Um, uh, a little tiny bit of background, in addition to that this is our seventh year as a team. I am not a teacher. <laughs> I do not have an engineering background. This program is so amazing it just sucks you in the second you find out about it. Um, I found this program when my sons started Mount Lake Terrace as a soft freshman, and that was four full complete years ago. He, he went through the entire program. We have our own little personal uh, success story is that he went through the entire program and is now a freshman at UW, hoping to major in mechanical um, engineering with a minor in business. This program, um, uh, <laughs> this program gives these students opportunities. Um, Dean Kamen says a couple things, and one of them you hear a lot is, it's not about the robot, and it's not. <laughs> they, they build a robot, they compete, it's almost like a sporting event that they're competing in, yet it's so not about the robot. They're a team, we, they do their own marketing, they do their own fundraising, they have opportunities for events like this where they get to speak and, and uh, share the program with people that don't know about it yet. And in the meantime, because it's so fun, they had the, all these doors open to them that lead them into businesses and futures down the road. And all these students are so amazing. It's a pleasure to work with them. You stay even after your own leaves because it's such a privilege. 
So, and it opens job opportunities as well. I now work with Michael and the board that runs all the events for the state of Washington. So, I'm going to introduce Frank and Elizabeth. They each have a little bit of a different background of why they're on the team, and that's always exciting. Elizabeth is first. Elizabeth is a senior this year. She's been on our team four years. Three, oh, that's right, you're so, she was too busy swimming her freshman year. <laughs> and your student here as well, are you not? Yes, I am. Okay, so this is Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hippen, and as you heard, I'm 18 years old and a senior at Mount Lake Terrace High School. And I had my first, you know, run in with first, um, my freshman year. So I followed what you could say was the typical route. I played a sport, I really focused on my schoolwork. And a couple of my friends joined her box and they're like, come on, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. And I'm like, what's so fun about staying six extra hours after school every day? I don't get it. So, you know, a year went by and in the spring, I finally went to a meeting. Unfortunately, this was the meeting where they were signing all their thank you cards to the sponsors. So somehow I wound up with a pen in my hand and signing, you know, 50 plus cards for about a half hour. Really hurt afterwards. So sophomore year came along and basically, you know, I did swim. But then in the winter, I was like, okay, fine, I'll join. Just stop bugging me. And I joined in the winter for FRC and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Working with the people and really learning how to lead. Well, we got to competition and I fell head over heels in love. I understood why these people gave up so much, why they work so hard for what they love doing. And it's really the joy of competing and seeing something you've made achieve something, whether that's just moving two inches on the field or actually winning the regional. So now I'm in my senior year. I am part of the board leadership of our team. I am the treasurer and I'm also leading a girls FTC team. So, and then I also have my first acceptance letter to University of Portland, where I've been accepted to the School of Engineering. Hello, I'm Franklin Koenig. I'm in my junior year at Mount Lake Terrace High School. I'm 17 years old. And I have the distinguished honor of serving as the president for this team this year, which Pretty exciting, it's a lot of extra meetings and stuff, so uh, I'm getting used to it. Um, I first discovered FIRST my seventh grade year during middle school. I joined the FIRST LEGO League team at Albert Middle School. Now, this was a big, really important part of my life because I had spent four years at Hiswood Elementary School, discovered the challenge program at Terrace Park, uh, Terrace Park transferred there fifth and sixth grade, leaving behind the friends I had made in those four years at Hiswood. Then arrived at Alderwood Middle School, leaving those friends I made at Terrace behind. And had to make new friends. And so, Lego League really did that for me. And I just have now continued being friends with them. James, sitting here from the Linwood team, is one of those guys. And so, they've just been my core group of friends. And so, that's really why I love robotics. It's the friendships I've gained through it. Now, starting freshman year uh, at Mount Lake Terrace, I played around with you know, the Lego robots, and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I kind of like little robots. But it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm quite frankly not much of an engineer. So I was wondering, well, how else can I help out this team? And their website guy had just graduated, so I was like, sure, I'll do that. How do I do that? <laughs> so they hooked me up with a mentor, and I began learning how to code HTML, and before you knew it, by the end of build season, I had built a website for the team from scratch. It was like, yes, so awesome. Learn how to do something new, accomplish something. So I've been continuing now, this starting third year as our website guy. And that involved me pretty much all freshman year during the build season, so I didn't work much on the robot, but I was okay with that. Sophomore year, I began working on the robot a little bit more. But end of freshman year, first competition was when I really discovered the thing I really liked. Heidi, when she was mentoring for our team before she moved over to Linwood, introduced to our team this idea of scouting. When you're at competition, the way it works is you're paired up with two other robots from other teams, and the three of you work together to compete. And after your qualification matches, you end up in an elimination tournament if you're ranked high enough. So the question becomes, how do you pick your partners for the elimination tournament? And that's where scouting comes in. So we collect the data for the, how well the other robots are performing, we analyze it, and then we can make our choices. 
And so that's where my real job on the team is. I'm the scout master, you can say, although I don't hand out any badges for doing really cool. Work. Um, and so I'm probably thinking about majoring in statistics when I get to college. So it's just I enjoy scouting so much. And that's my first experience. Great. Before I introduce Heidi, uh, Frank pointed out that the success of the program happens because we have mentors, people just like you, who come work with the kids after school in the evenings and the weekends, and that's really where the magic happens. When you put an adult who is a professional in the field with these students who maybe haven't had that opportunity before. And so I would encourage you, if you have any interest in mentoring either of these teams or other teams in the area, please let me know. So Heidi, why don't you come up and bring your students with you? I think two of the students are going to speak, so um, Heidi, you can introduce them. I'm Heidi Burkett, and I was a parent and mentor with Mount Lake Terrace High School, and then my student graduated, and we moved, and my daughters are at Linwood High School, so I ended up with the Linwood High School team to work with my daughters, and I'm a coach for our younger kids at the Alderwood Middle School with FLL, which is Lego Robotics, and then these are my, a couple of the students I work with at the Linwood High School team, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So my name is Connor Blumquist, and I first learned about the FIRST Robotics program when I was at a uh, high school planning meeting in 8th grade. And they showed a Project Lead the Way video. They were showing Project Lead the Way, and then at the end they showed a FIRST Robotics video because the same teacher that does that was doing FIRST Robotics. And then I immediately knew in high school that that's what I wanted to do with my time. And so I went back to my middle school and talked about it with my friends and stuff. And then Sarah Beth, who's her daughter, uh, who was a part of the Mount Terrace Robotics team told me, oh yeah, I do that, that's so cool. And then I wanted to go with her and try it and do it. And so I went to the competition and I thought, this is what I want. And then as soon as I got to high school, I dove in and a big part of our team doing electrical and programming. Hi, I'm Corinne. I'm a senior and I started in eighth grade because I had a sister who's two years older, so she was in 10th grade on her second year of first at Mount Lake Terrace. Um, and my dad was a Boeing engineer, so he was a mentor. And so I'd walk over from the middle school to the high school, show up, hey dad, I'm gonna go off, do my homework, and just chill here until you guys are done. He goes, you're not going away from here. You're working on a robot. How do I do that? Uh, there are these wires. You're speaking words I don't understand, Dad. But now as a senior, I'm telling the freshmen, I'm like, okay, so this is what I'm doing. And I just see their faces like, whoosh. I feel awesome. <laughs> and it, it just was really great for me because as an eighth grader, I got to tell all my friends, yeah, I'm working at the high school. I, I'm, on, I, I'm on a really smart team over at the high school. I'm awesome. And then now as a high school, it's not really as awesome as telling your 8th grade friends that you're in high school. But I'm still really happy about doing it because I get to tell my friends, yeah, I get to go to uh, Seattle, get to go to Portland, I might get to go to St. Louis, I can go to college, you know, I can get a job at Boeing. And uh, actually, I, I'm an art student. I go to Mount Lake Paris for the music. I go to Limwood for robotics. And people ask me, well, don't you want to do robotics? No. I, before, like, my parents would say, hey, Corinne, what do you want to do for your career when you're older? Here I am in elementary school. I want to be a rock star. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, neuro-robotics kind of seems pretty legit. I, I, I'm thinking neuro-robotics, and hopefully I get into UW. <laughs> uh, it just first has really opened my eyes because now I get, I'm the secretary, I am secretary for three years now. This is my third year as secretary. Um, I, at competitions, it's not just the robot, as we all pointed out, it's not just the robot. There's all the paperwork, there is paperwork. <laughs> and also, there's a lot of spirit, there, I have a lot of fun just jumping around, cheering all the, all the teams. Our team doesn't do very well, I don't care. I cheer on Skunk Works, I cheer on a new team. If they're not very energetic, I go, come on you guys, you guys gotta cheer on your team or else you, you know, there, there's no use being there if your robot's not good, still have spirit. 
And since I'm a music student, the national anthem is sung every year, so I get to do that and I get to show off my talent. And robotics is more of a time for me to bond with my dad because we don't really get along that well. <laughs> Father, daughter, what can I say? And after, after competition, we're like, okay, competition's done. Now, now score. Uh, no, we're still planning for the next robot. Really, Dad? Yeah. So I stay up till 10 every night. Okay, so this is a swerve drive. This would happen if we had this kind of a competition. Dad, I want to go to sleep. No! I like this! Okay. But it, just such an experience. I have a six-year-old cousin. She goes every year. She goes, I want to do this when I'm older. So that's what I'm excited for. Great. So, can you guys want to stay up here, and Elizabeth and Frank, you want to come up here, and uh, we also have Craig Devine, who's the career and technical education teacher at uh, Mount Lake Terrace. Why don't you all come up here? Is that right? And it's, uh, um, if you have questions, I hope hope you'll ask them and not me. Okay. Um, and they're each one of them have brought a robot that's behind. So afterwards, if you want to come up and, and look at that. And I just, uh, before I maybe take a couple questions, Dean Kamen said it so well in the video. Look at these guys. They're our future. Yeah. And I'm really, really excited about our future when you listen to these kids. It's really encouraging. So any questions that, yes, sir? Or if you have a student and it's attending a school that doesn't We'd love to. We'd love to start programs at schools, and we just need a champion. Yes, they can. Both our schools have uh, team members from uh, Woodway and Meadowdale. Um, I think we have two members from Meadowdale. Yeah, and you guys have some from Woodway? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, they can come to our schools if they want to, really want to. If they can make the community, even if they show up late, we're glad to have them. And it's something we really encourage. And homeschoolers too, yeah, they're also welcome. Other questions? Yes, the back. Yes, they do. Yes, at Tahoma High School, um, there's a very, very successful program there in Maple Valley, Covington. Yes. Other other questions? What is, uh, what is the uh, success rate when they go on to college? And how does how does this help them get into the college of their choice? Actually, I know the statistics. You know the statistics. I know the statistics. It helped us. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so First, just did a stud, had a study done. I think it's by Carnegie Mellon. Don't quote me on that. 84% um, of the students that come out of FIRST Robotics go on to tech, college, university to um, pursue science, technology, mathematics careers. So it has the highest rate. Um, almost catching up also with the business students because they have to run the team as a business. So um, the first students are catching up to the DECA and the junior achievement students with going to college for business. Last year there was $13 million worth of scholarships given to first students across the country, uh, both from schools who give them and from organizations and companies that want to encourage people uh, to pursue careers in science and technology. Any other questions? Any uh, statistics on how the students fare after they You can, it's on the website, it actually tells you what um, the... Yes, a really good question, and it's a little bit of a weak link in our program because kids being kids and privacy have not really tracking the students um, as well as we wish we could so that we could give you those statistics, yeah. We are working on fixing that, though. Yes, <laughs> we, we, are, we are trying to track down our alumni. <laughs> I know that uh, a lot of students that go through the first program come back and be mentors for the future students also. 
And Boeing has promised that if a student has been involved in FIRST and they put that on their application, they're guaranteed an interview with them for a job, which, as you know, even getting an interview at Boeing can be very difficult because the jobs are really coveted. So if you come out of this program, um, organizations like Boeing and Microsoft recognize it as something that stands above other students. Just was wondering, for the competition purpose, does somebody set the standard of what equipment, machinery can only be used? Is there a set of there's governance? A whole, a whole manual with all of that. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a whole rule book and manual with all the size requirements, uh, types of parts you can use. Um, in fact, when you sign up, um, there's a kickoff event. Uh, the challenge is different each year. There's a different game the robots have to play. And so during the kickoff event, you acquire your kit of basic parts, and you also have to acquire additional materials that you need to, depending on how crazy of a thing you want to do with your robot. If that's like a like scissor lift or forklift or some sort of arm, maybe you want a vacuum pump on your robot to suck something up and carry it around that way. But um, there's also a weight limit for your robot, so it doesn't get too heavy. It uh, kind of sometimes changes. It's usually around 160 pounds is the most the robots can be. Um, 120? I thought it was 160. One year wasn't it 160? Yeah, yes. Yeah, one year is 160. Yeah, okay, never. I'm sorry, I was mistaken. 120 is usually one year. And there's a 120 dollar battery. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, spending limit too. Yeah. What's behind you? The robots. <laughs> yes. Um, so these are our robots. Sorry. Um, this one is the Terrace robot from uh, last year. Uh, it's kind of in a state this repair. It's been cannibalized a little bit for <laughs> some other stuff. Um, and then we brought uh, demonstration. a demonstration robot that's drive off the road. I think they're going to drive it around for you guys. And yeah, it sounds like if you want to come up and drive a robot, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> Actually, the FLO, the first Lego League, was um, every year they have a theme, and last year's theme was Body Forward, which I think he has his shirt on, Carmen, oh, turn around. Body so, Body Forward, and the middle school, nine years old to 14, are the age limit for that. And the whole entire thing was based on medical robotics and nanorobotics, so delivery of medication, um, mending of bones, implementing stints, and the Da Vinci robot that does surgery was actually on site at our FRC competition this year, so that the kids got to go and um, use it and you know and see how that functions. So yeah, they try to make sure that we are in a different area every year, that we're learning something new that's completely applicable. Excuse me if I missed it, but do you guys get credit then for math, science? No, no. none whatsoever. So none of this, get, this gets is all after school. school. This is an after school extracurricular activity that... How do you <laughs> fix that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. We need more help. Yeah. And how many hours do you get your kids? Um, On average, right. a, okay, so here, here's just really briefly. Our season, I think you guys are too, we're year long. We, yeah. we, we go year school year round. We start in September. Uh, it even goes into the summer with some opportunities to, you know, run robotics camps. I know we both did that this summer. We ran robotics camps at Alderwood Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, so we're really this is a year long event. It it comes and goes with the intensity of the hours, but our primary build season is from January seventh until what is called bag and tag night, which is like February 21st or 22nd, right in that area. It's exactly six weeks. Everybody nationwide has the exact amount of time. And in that time frame, these students put over well over 250 hours in six weeks. After school, maintaining grades, some of them also do sports, some of them also have jobs. So, and, and most parents have jobs as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
And on our team, we give an award to members that's called the Robotics as a Full-Time Job Award. Mm -hmm. That when the hours equal 40 hours a week for the six-week build season, that that equals you your full-time job. And, yeah. and Michael. Is there any other questions? We got time for one more question. If you were to kind of divide the build time between Computer programming, mechanical devices, what would the percentage be? Really, it's kind of 75, no, like 65, 40, because there's also administration. Because there, there's a lot of mechanical, this takes a lot of work, but also the programming takes a lot of work and the electrical takes a lot of work so yeah it's like 65 40 and then the extra the 65 would that be the capital yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 60 yeah 65 would be mechanical 30 got to do my math here 30 would be electrical just got back from school my head hurts <laughs> so really cuz it's such a short time that uh, both programming and mechanical type aspects are working from the beginning all the way till the end. It's just more of the number of students that are working in each category. Like if you have, if your team has a lot of students that are interested in programming or whatever, then there tends to be a lot more students working on programming at the given time or whatever. And sometimes you have to pull some of those students away to go do something that they don't necessarily want to do. But so. Can I say one last thing really fast that I forgot to say in my opening? And that is my favorite quote from Dean Kamen, or from Woody Flowers, who is co-founder of FIRST with Dean Kamen, is that this really is a very hands-on, real look at what real life and a real job is. This is a project too big in a time frame too short with a, not enough money and too many people on the team. And that's what these kids do every single year and succeed well, and it's not about the robot. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give you a pause.